As covered in Texture Pass 01, in other ways, before importing PSD into 3D Code, you could select a layer underneath, pick your gradient, invert and delete all the unneeded information. The most efficient and clean way of working in this pipeline is to create a complex selection sets and grayscale. Then you're able to create a normal and a diffuse map out of those grayscale selection sets. Note, if you want to make normals in 3D coat, for myself I found that painting the whole model 50% grayscale is a good idea. This gives you the ability to see the normals better. You of course have the ability to increase the intensity and rotate the HDRI image to be able to view the normal detail even better. At the beginning of this project I wanted to give a hand painted feeling to the textures, but by the end I left the hand painted style on the skin, yet for everything else that was done through layering selection sets on top of one another in Photoshop. In 3D Coat, kind of quickly going over the viewport options, is I tend to work with uh, if you go to custom navigation, I, I set it to ZBrush like and then rotate around custom point and uh, as talked about before, custom point you just you hover, you pick a place and you press F and then it sets a point and then now you, you can orbit around that specific point. With um, the primary light here, you can start adjusting the intensity intensity of the light also the kind of the direction of the light as well same thing with here in the you can pick your different HDRIs and this is very uh, all of this is very misleading because it gives you the visual kind of representation of what it will look like within 3d code but you really have no idea how it would look like in Unreal Engine 4 unless you somehow perfectly match the HDRI and the light setup within both of those engines. But sometimes the light intensity and the orbit of the light is very comes in handy because when you're trying just to paint the normal information, sometimes you're you're not really sure what the stroke looks like. So orbiting the light around and switching the intensity up helps you kind of see further the details that you're drawing on the model. To tie in some of the ideas mentioned before, the reason you want to place together your, your UV islands based on materials is due to tileable textures. For this project I decided to make four-way tileable textures for cloth, feather, leather big, leather small, metal, and skin. Creating tileable textures is a good idea because your character is going to be placed into a world. When you're creating a world, which essentially is one big character, the principle of what is above so below, or micro macro scale comes into effect. Each component of the world has to synergistically fit with one another. So all characters, props, textures, music, sound effects, lighting, animations, etc, etc. Just like all the pipeline steps that I've covered in making this character are crucial for a character to be well rounded on the micro level, so do all the components within the world need to be well balanced to make the world solid on the macro level. Meaning that even the approach you take for creating your edge loops, cuts, placement of details, and the use of textures need to be relatively the same for each character. So visually, it feels like every aspect of the world fits together when placed side by side. Thus, if you create sets of tileable textures, let's say leather set, in that set you'll have multiple different types of leather. Then you'll have the same types of leather, but redrawn on a different scale so they can be used at different places depending on the distance away from the camera screen. Then you'll be able to use those textures throughout the world on characters and props, thus unifying the world even more so. So you can structure your UV layout by allocating spaces which will be devoted only to a specific texture, which you'll plop in from your four-way tileable sets. That's why instead of having everything on one by one, you can offset certain UV islands for easier visual recognition and easier selection. 
Let me quickly demonstrate the tileable textures that were created for this specific character. Here are some of the textures specifically created for the character. Here, this is the leather big. All this was done in Photoshop by creating uh, gradients, gradient masks, and then outputting it and combining it in Crazy Bump. This was my attempt at placing them within Sketchfab and seeing how they would all react in uh, real-time kind of environment. Same thing with leather small. This is used on the, the straps and the leather bag and metal for the helmet and the, and the sword. So now you can see that this metal can be applicable to pretty much all the weapons or swords, let's say, in the game unifying them all if those weapons are the kind of approximate the same scale as what the lizard character has in his hand currently so you can easily take the diffused color of it and switch it to whatever fits better for that particular character i'm not going to go into the actual creation of tileable textures which could well be more than an hour long discussion but I did use Photoshop to crazy bump workflow. Lots of blending between many different layers. In my early attempts for the second texture pass, I created all the normal and roughness information 3D coat using the program's alphas and different brushes. But then I decided to scrap it all and create my own textures because upon closer inspection, the detail were of a different scale. So i.e. Uh, the skin pores some were much bigger than others. Uh, the argument is face area is different, but you get into micro detail territory, which doesn't read well or at all at 1024 texture, and especially on stylized characters. Note, another good idea would be to create large skin pores texture and small skin pores texture, and then blend between those two whenever needed for realistic characters. In 3D code, I specified a metalness workflow. Let me quickly show you. I'm using 4.7 version of 3D code and working within the PBR lighting you have to specify going into textures and uh, texture export import workflow uh, which type of workflow you're going to be using and essentially uh, they're kind of they're the same. You can convert roughness into gloss very easily just by flipping white to, to black and black to white. But I usually work within the roughness metalness workflow. So what I ended up using 3D Coat for was creating a hand painted diffuse layer in 3D Coat. You have the ability to work on all maps at the same time, meaning that each stroke will paint information on diffuse, spec, slash roughness, and normal layers. I turned everything off except for diffuse, but then after creating normals by hand through Photoshop to Crazy Bump workflow, I brought in the normal information into 3D Coat. And on an additive layer, I started painting indents corrosions giving a certain uniqueness to the textures. Same principle for roughness map because you have all your selections left over from normal map creation within Photoshop. Uh, you can start manually adjusting the values of the grayscale image to make it into a roughness spec map. Then in 3D Coat or in Photoshop, add a layer with an additional uniqueness. Let me show you this. 